Today, we are going on a journey to examine one of the cornerstones of science. We will discuss a theory that is one of the most groundbreaking discoveries in the history of science and has profoundly changed our modern understanding of physics. Albert Einstein's theory of relativity of Einstein radically changed the meaning of time and space. This theory, which initially appeared to be just a mathematical equation, has become a key to understanding how the universe works. The theory of relativity was put forward by Einstein in the early 20th century and turned the classical understanding of physics upside down. This theory allowed us to understand how events in time and space are shaped, especially by revealing that the speed of light is a fundamental constant of the universe. In today's video, we invite you to discover what dimension time is, We'll take a closer look at how time plays a role in relativity and how this theory shapes the broader landscape of the universe, from stars to galaxies. Albert Einstein was born on March 14, 1879 in Ulm, Germany. His youth covers an important period in which he develops his scientific curiosity and original thinking ability. Einstein was a curious student since his childhood. His interest in mathematics and science emerged at an early age. His family supported his talents and gave importance to his education. Albert Einstein developed his ability to speak quite late. He had difficulty speaking at a young age, and this affected the way he learned. But his natural aptitude for math and science made up for this difficulty. In 1895, Einstein entered the Federal Technical School in Zurich. His achievements in physics and mathematics attracted the attention of faculty members. However, he clashed with some teachers due to his tendency to disobey rules and his independent way of thinking. Because at that time, the education system in German universities was very disciplined and students were expected to follow strict rules. Einstein tended to challenge traditional patterns of thought. He had an independent way of thinking and a tendency to go against the rules. This situation caused him to experience problems from time to time in his academic life. Einstein was unemployed for a while after graduating from university. In 1902 he found a job at the Swiss Patent Office. During this time, he focused on his scientific thoughts while making a living by reviewing patent applications. During this time, he focused on his scientific thoughts while making a living by reviewing patent applications. This process was another turning point in his scientific career. 1905 is a year in which Albert Einstein published four important scientific papers that were groundbreaking in his career, known in the scientific world or as the Year of the Miracle. These four articles point to major discoveries and theoretical innovations on different topics. The first of these four articles is introduction of the photon concept and photoelectric effect. Einstein's article on the photoelectric effect introduced the concept of the photon and suggested that the energy of light had a quantum structure. This was a basic principle that light behaves as a packet of energy and that energy is emitted in certain quanta. This article formed one of the cornerstones of quantum physics. The second article is Brownian motion and proof of atomic existence. EINSTAIN's his paper on Brownian motion proved the existence of atoms experimentally. This work mathematically explained the random motions of observed small particles and supported atomic theory. This was an important step at a time when many scientists at the time were skeptical about the existence of atoms. The third article is Mass Energy Equivalence. Einstein introduced his paper on mass energy equivalence in his famous equation. Dot. This equation expresses the relationship between mass and energy and plays a fundamental role in the release of nuclear energy. The fourth article is the Special Theory of Relativity. Einstein's article on the theory of special relativity suggested that time and space were based on the principle of relativity. 
This theory fundamentally changed the understanding of classical mechanics by revealing how fast-moving objects experience time and that the speed of light is a constant throughout the universe. Einstein was appointed as a lecturer at the University of Bern in 1908. Here he began to develop his general theory of relativity. He transferred to the University of Zurich in 1911, but it would take several more years to complete his theory of general relativity. In 1914, he was elected as a member of the Prussian Academy of Sciences and settled in Berlin during this period. During this time he completed the theory of general relativity and played a leading role in theoretical physics in general. In 1915, he completed the theory of universal relativity, which generalized the special theory of relativity. This theory led to important discoveries about gravity and the curvature of space-time. Albert Einstein's youth was a period marked by his passion for learning and thinking to make significant contributions to the world of science. The experiences of his youth formed the mental infrastructure that would lead scientific revolutions in the following years. Einstein's innovative approach in theoretical physics created a new framework in modern physics by shaking the traditional Newtonian understanding of mechanics and the rules of classical electromagnetism. This framework has made significant contributions to the scientific world, especially in subjects such as the elasticity of space-time, mass-energy equivalence and quantum physics. Classical physics includes the physical theories that developed in the period from the late 17th century to the mid-19th century, and a major development took place during this period under the leadership of Sir Isaac Newton. Newton's major work, Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica, included the laws of classical mechanics and universal gravitation. However, Newton's legacy brought with it some problems and these problems became more evident, especially with new experimental observations and developing theories that emerged in the second half of the 19th century. The idea that light was defined only as a wave in Newton's time was shaken by the wave-particle dilemma in the early 19th century. Newton argued that light was a stream of particles. The wave-particle dilemma proposed that light behaves as both a wave and a particle pushing the boundaries of classical electromagnetism. The development of the laws of thermodynamics provided important information regarding the conservation of energy and heat transfer. However, it was observed that these laws were insufficient to explain why the universe evolved with steadily increasing entropy over time. Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism predicted the existence of electromagnetic waves, but there was uncertainty about the medium in which these waves propagated. This was explained by the special theory of relativity, which showed that electromagnetic waves do not propagate through matter, but propagate in an empty space. Newton's laws of motion were largely correct at low speeds, but they were not valid when moving to very high speeds or microscopic scales. He could not accurately explain the behavior of moving objects. As speeds increased, discrepancies emerged between Newton's theory of mechanics and the observed values. These problems have led to new theories for understanding systems, especially at atomic and subatomic scales. Limitations in this regard have led to the emergence of new theories such as the special theory of relativity and quantum mechanics. Newton's theory did not directly address the relationship between energy and mass. This was especially insufficient to understand nuclear reactions and events at the subatomic level. Newton's understanding of time included the concept of absolute time in the universe. However, the theory of special relativity revealed that time depends on the observer and that rapidly moving objects experience time differently. This was an important development that questioned Newton's understanding of time. These problems demonstrated the limits of the classical physics paradigm, and these limitations triggered the emergence of new physical theories in the 20th century. Einstein's special and general theories of relativity and Max Planck's quantum theory formed the cornerstones of modern physics, greatly expanding the paradigm of classical physics. 
Newton's time. There were a number of mysteries and debates regarding the speed of light. Nipton thought that light was a kind of flow of particles and suggested that these particles were of different colors. In his work, Optics, he showed that white light is separated into colors by passing it through a prism. This reinforced the idea that light was split into different colors and that the colors traveled at different speeds. However, uncertainties about the speed of light remained. James Clerk Maxwell's electromagnetic theory, developed in the 19th century, was an important step in explaining the nature of light and suggested that the speed of light has a certain value. Maxwell's equation showed that electricity and magnetism were interconnected, that electromagnetic waves existed, and that these waves propagated at a certain speed. These equations describe how electric fields and magnetic fields are interconnected. These equations state that electric current will produce a magnetic field, and a changing magnetic field will produce electric current. Maxwell's equations describe the existence of electromagnetic waves and their propagation speed. These wave equations show that electromagnetic waves propagate at a certain speed, like light. Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity emerged with his article on the electrodynamics of moving bodies, published in 1905. This theory is a groundbreaking theory that fundamentally shakes Knighton's understanding of classical mechanics and deals with fundamental concepts such as time, space, mass and energy. When Einstein studied Maxwell's electromagnetic theory, he realized that the speed of light is constant for every observer in a vacuum. This showed that electromagnetic waves propagate at a certain speed in empty space. Recognizing that the speed of light is the same for every observer, he began to develop the theory of special relativity. According to the principle of relativity, physical laws should be the same for all internal observers. This means that a rapidly moving observer should not obtain different results depending on the system he is observing. Special relativity emphasizes the relativity of time. A rapidly moving observer may have a different perception of time than an observer at lower speeds. This reveals that time is not absolute and can vary depending on the speed of the observer. Newton's understanding of classical mechanics, time operated in the universe depending on an absolute reference frame. However, considering that the speed of light was the same for every observer, Einstein argued that time did not have an absolute value and could change depending on the movement of the observer. According to the special theory of relativity, the time of any observer can vary depending on his motion. In particular, when there is a relative speed difference between two observers, there may be time zone differences between these observers. Mathematical tools such as Lorentz transformations are used to understand this situation. The time of an object moving at relative speeds progresses more slowly than the time in a system where the observer is stationary. This means that observers living inside fast-moving objects will experience slower movement when viewed from a slower-moving reference system. This phenomenon is called time dilation. Conversely, from the perspective of an observer moving with relative speed, the length of an object contracts with relative speed while the time of the same object expands with relative speed. This is known as time crunching. The theory also suggests that the length of a rapidly moving object shortens depending on the relative speed of that object. This means that the perception of length can also vary depending on the speed of the observer. Of Einstein show that time and space are flexible and relative and can change depending on a particular frame of reference. These concepts provide the basis for more accurately describing the behavior of fast-moving objects and the relationship between time and space. The theory of special relativity, based on these principles, created a great revolution in the scientific world, expanded the understanding of classical mechanics and gained an important place in modern physics. Lorentz transformations are one of the fundamental mathematical tools in the special theory of relativity. 
These transformations express how time and space change depending on the speed of the observer. Lorentz transformations were developed by Albert Einstein when he developed his theory of special relativity. Poincaré and Hendrick it was also formulated independently by other scientists such as Lorentz. However, it is named after Lorentz because he was the first to explain these transformations in detail. These transformations express time and space relationships between observers, especially those moving at high speeds. Lorentz transformations are used to explain special relativity effects such as time dilation and length contraction. These transformations in the theory of special relativity state that, unlike classical mechanics, time and space are relative depending on the speed of the observer and the speed of light is constant for every observer in the universe. This is consistent with the principle of relativity and expresses mathematically the principle of constancy of the speed of light. The mass-energy relationship is a concept produced based on Einstein's special theory of relativity and expressed by a special equation. This relationship shows the transformation between mass and energy and states that matter can be transformed into energy and energy into matter. It shows that an object can convert energy into energy equal to its dynamic mass times the square of the speed of light. This relationship played an important role especially in the understanding of the atomic bomb and in the development of nuclear energy technologies. The atomic bomb and nuclear energy are based on the principle of mass-energy conversion. This, e this equation of Einstein revealed the connection between mass and energy in a way not previously thought, and is considered a fundamental principle in modern physics. Atomic bombs and nuclear energy are generally based on nuclear fission reactions. In these reactions, a heavy atomic nucleus is bombarded by neutrons, creating two or more smaller nuclei and some neutrons. Mass loss occurs during this reaction. Nuclear fission reactions. The mass of the nuclei changes and mass loss occurs. This energy release causes a huge amount of intense energy to be emitted. This released energy can be used in the explosion of a nuclear bomb or a nuclear reactor in a more uncontrolled way than in an uncontrolled explosion. In nuclear reactors, fission reactions are kept under control and a large amount of heat energy is produced, which can then be converted into electrical energy and used. The atomic bomb is an application in which mass energy conversion is used extensively. Even a very small loss of mass during an explosion can cause a huge release of energy. Nuclear energy technologies use the energy obtained from controlled fission reactions by converting it into electrical energy. Nuclear energy is potentially important for meeting energy needs due to its potential to reduce carbon emissions and produce large amounts of energy. Mass energy conversion is a fundamental concept in nuclear physics and energy technologies and is seen in practical applications of Einstein's equation. The theory of general relativity is expressed mathematically by Einstein's field equations. These equations relate the curvature of spacetime to the distribution of mass and energy. Einstein proposed that the effect of gravity was actually the curvature of spacetime. The space-time around a massive object has a curved structure around this massive object. This curvature is associated with the effect of gravity. The equivalence principle states that a free-falling observer will have the same experiences as an observer under gravity and an observer in an accelerating box. This means that gravity does not actually create acceleration, but that objects move in a curved path due to the curvature of space-time. A massive object warps the space-time around it. The severity of this curvature depends on the mass and energy of the massive object. Objects with large masses curve the space-time around them more. This deformation caused by curvature causes the curvature of the path that a free-falling object follows as it falls. This path will be a curved path, not a straight line. A freely falling object moves on a curve in warped spacetime under the influence of gravity. This curve is similar to the falling path of a vertically free falling object. 
However, this curve occurs due to the curvature of space-time, a path driven by gravity. As a result of this curvature, the speed at which an object falls may differ from a speed at which it would normally be expected to fall. Additionally, under the influence of warped space-time, time also flows at a different rate of gravity, the flow of time slows down. This effect is called time dilation. Length contraction, a phenomenon in which lengths will shorten slightly when an observer measures lengths in that region, can also be observed. These effects become especially pronounced in very strong gravitational fields, that is, near massive objects. Spacetime curvature is considered a property of masses and energy. Objects with large masses train spacetime around them. The severity of this curvature depends on the amount of mass or energy. It is a phenomenon that causes the wavelength of light to lengthen as it passes through a gravitational field. This causes the frequency of the light to decrease and shift to red. This is known as gravitational redshift. These concepts are central to Einstein's general theory of relativity. The theory provides a mathematical framework for explaining the curvature of spacetime and gravitational effects, and this framework is consistent with many experimental observations. Gravitational waves are an underlying prediction of Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. When Einstein formulated this theory in 1915, its mathematical equations predicted that changes in the gravitational field would propagate as waves through space-time. These waves are called, gravitational waves. However, this prediction of Einstein could not be confirmed experimentally at that time, and gravitational waves were not directly observed until 2015. In 2015, the LIGO experiment achieved a revolutionary achievement in this field by directly observing gravitational waves resulting from the merger of two black holes. This observation once again confirmed the accuracy of Einstein's theory of general relativity and also proved the existence of gravitational waves. Of gravity cause space-time to fluctuate. These fluctuations create gravitational waves. Gravitational waves unlike electromagnetic waves, can propagate through matter without interacting with it and can also propagate in vacuum. Since they do not interact with matter, they are not affected by obstacles or the atmosphere. LIGO contains an array of laser interferometers that directly observe gravitational waves using the principle of interferometry. LIGO's first observation in 2015 represented a historic moment in confirming gravitational waves resulting from the merger of two black holes. Direct observation of gravitational waves has made a major contribution to our understanding of how accurate Einstein's theory is and how events in the gravitational field affect space-time. These observations have also demonstrated the potential of using gravitational waves as a new observation tool in astronomy and astrophysics. Black holes are regions that usually form as a result of the collapse of massive stars under the influence of gravity, where gravity is so strong that neither light nor anything else can escape from there. These dense masses warp time and space incredibly, causing interesting phenomena. Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity is used to explain how black holes affect this curvature. The equivalence principle states that a free-falling observer in a gravitational field will have the same experiences as an observer in an accelerating box. That is, an observer standing near the surface of a black hole and an observer accelerating inside a spacecraft experience the same time period. However, this does not apply to a person observing from a distance. Gravity affects the flow of time by warping space-time around a black hole. A stronger gravity causes time to slow down more. This phenomenon is called, time slowing down. The event horizon inside black holes is the limit from which nothing inside can escape. To observers, when something approaches the event horizon, time appears to slow down more. The time of an observer entering the event horizon actually slows down so much that, while passing forever in the outside world, 
he himself experiences a specific moment in the event horizon. For a person observing this situation from outside, the observer can never cross the event horizon. The event horizon determines the boundaries of a black hole. In understanding the existence and properties of black holes, especially the event horizon, it proves the accuracy of Einstein's theory. Einstein's general theory of relativity requires that gravitational fields be expressed in complex mathematical equations. These equations are used to calculate the event horizon and other properties of black holes. The event horizon is defined through these mathematical equations and confirmed by observations of the existence of black holes. Gravitational wave observation systems such as LIGO and Virgo have confirmed the accuracy of black holes by detecting the gravitational waves produced during the mergers of pairs of black holes examining the electromagnetic radiation accompanying these events, and determining properties such as the black hole's mass, rotation speed, and event horizon diameter. The Schwarzschild radius is one of the solutions to Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity and plays an important role in describing black holes. Carl Schwarzschild found the first black hole solution by solving Einstein's field equations in 1916 and the boundary in a certain radial coordinate in this solution is called the Schwarzschild radius. The Schwarzschild radius refers to the distance to the boundary known as the event horizon of a black hole. The event horizon is the point from which nothing falling into the black hole, even light, can escape. Black hole increases or the speed of light decreases. The radius of the Schwarzschild also increases. This shows that the gravitational effect of the black hole is increasing and the boundary of the event horizon is expanding. Einstein's general theory of relativity includes the Schwarzschild solution. The Schwarzschild radius is a consequence of this theory. This radius is a fundamental tool in determining the boundaries of black holes and understanding the properties of black holes. In particular, if an object falls within the Schwarzschild, it is impossible for this object to escape by exceeding the speed of light, and after this point the object is considered a black hole. The curvature of spacetime around a black hole varies depending on a black hole's mass and spin rate. The severity of this curvature depends on the slowing down and curvature of time in the gravitational area of the black hole. Black holes are places where time warps not only in its own dimension, but also in the dimensions of space. This causes space to warp and distort around the black hole. Einstein's theory of general relativity did not offer a view on the expansion of the universe when it was formulated in 1915. Einstein added a cosmological constant to support the static universe model, which was a common belief at the time about whether the universe was expanding or not. However, Observations by astronomer Edwin Hubble in the 1920s supported the idea that the universe was expanding, providing evidence that distant galaxies were moving towards or away from us. This was contrary to Einstein's own theory. Einstein had difficulty accepting these results at first and attempted to preserve his own model by using the cosmological constant. However, later in 1931, he reviewed Hubble's observations and accepted that the universe was expanding. General theory of relativity is a theory that can address the expansion or contraction of the universe. Edwin Hubble's studies in the 1920s showed that distant galaxies are moving towards or away from us. These observations led to the conclusion that the universe is expanding. Einstein had added the cosmological constant to his original equations. However, he later removed this constant from his theory, calling it, my biggest mistake. Einstein's theory of general relativity is a theory that can model the expansion or contraction of the universe. This allows us to understand how space-time changes as the universe expands. Expansion of the universe, Bigot led to the Bang theory. According to this theory, the universe began to expand from a point of zero volume and infinite density. 
Understanding the acceleration of the expansion of the universe has revealed the need for cosmological components that are not yet fully understood, such as dark energy and dark matter. The general theory of relativity plays a fundamental role in many application areas. GPS system uses corrections of the general theory of relativity in the positioning systems of its satellites. At high speeds and strong gravitational fields, the flow of time changes. Therefore, general relativity corrections are required to calculate the time dilation in the satellite's clocks. LIGO and VIRGO are another verification of the general theory of relativity. Gravitational waves occur as a result of events such as the acceleration or collision of massive objects under the influence of gravity, and direct observation of these waves has confirmed Einstein's theory. The general theory of relativity helps us understand the energy and matter content of the universe. Observations have shown that in addition to visible matter, there are mysterious components called dark matter and dark energy in the universe. The existence and effects of these mysterious components are tried to be understood with comprehensive models including the general theory of relativity. General relativity plays a fundamental role in research such as telescope observations and the study of the cosmic microwave background. The evolution of large-scale structures and the understanding of the first moments of the universe are achieved using cosmological models of the general theory of relativity. Other important developments in physics have had a great impact on the scientific world, especially after the emergence of the general theory of relativity. General theory of relativity and quantum mechanics are two fundamental theories in physics. However, these two theories operate within different frameworks and often produce conflicting results. While quantum mechanics explains the behavior of particles at the microscopic level, general relativity theory helps us understand gravity and the large-scale structures of space-time. The long-standing effort to unify these two theories is one of the major problems in theoretical physics. The theory of general relativity combined with observations in astronomy, showed that the movements and structures observed in the universe could not be fully explained by standard matter and energy. This understanding revealed the need for mysterious components such as dark matter and dark energy. Observations have confirmed the existence of these mysterious components in the universe. The fundamental role of scientists in society is to enlighten society by disseminating scientific knowledge. Great thinkers such as Einstein made efforts to explain complex issues in an understandable way and to convey them to large audiences. This increases public access to scientific knowledge, enabling society to make more informed decisions. Scientists also play an important role in the field of education. Einstein advocated that educational systems encourage scientific thinking and equip individuals with scientific literacy. Scientific thinking involves taking a critical approach to problems, producing evidence-based solutions, and approaching knowledge openly. Albert Einstein's worldview had a broad perspective from both scientific and philosophical perspectives. Einstein, a physicist known for his theories of relativity, embraced the idea that events could change depending on the observer. However, this did not weaken Einstein's belief in objective reality. For him, reality was something that existed independently, and that reality was determined by an objective world that existed independently of the perspective of the observer. He believed that science should serve not only technological advances but also people's moral responsibilities. Science, in his opinion, should be used for the welfare and progress of humanity. He believed that he had social responsibilities not only as a scientist but also as a human being. He had an anti-war stance and warned the public about the dangers of nuclear weapons. Additionally, he was an activist striving for social justice and equality. Don't forget to subscribe for brand new documentaries and more scientific content.